If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before moving on. In part A, in order to solve for when will half the population have heard the rumor, we just have to recognize that the question is essentially telling us that P of T is going to equal 0.5. That's just another way of saying that the proportion of individuals who have heard the rumor is equal to half of the entire population. And so we'll substitute in 0.5 in for P of T. Now, next our objective is to solve for T. One way of doing that would be to place this over 1 and then cross multiply. We could next divide both sides of the equation by 0.5. We will then subtract 1 from both sides. Next, we can divide both sides by a. To get the negative kt down from the exponent, we'll have to take the natural log on both sides. Of course, the natural log of e is 1, so we can remove that. We'll notice on the right-hand side, through the properties of logarithms, that we can expand that into ln of 1 minus the ln of a. And then since the natural log of 1 is 0, we would have negative ln a on the right-hand side. And then finally, we can divide both sides by negative k. And then the negative divided by negative can actually just become positive. And so when the time is equal to the natural log of a divided by k, half of the population will have heard the rumor. Now for part b of the question, we're being asked to essentially maximize the rate of spread of the rumor. Now the rate of spread of the rumor is actually the derivative of this rumor function. So we're going to first have to take the derivative of this equation. Since it's a quotient, we could apply the quotient rule to find its derivative. So we would have the bottom function multiplied by the derivative of the top function, which is a constant, so that derivative would be 0, minus the top function, which is just 1, times the derivative of the bottom. And the derivative of the bottom would become 0 plus the exponential function whose derivative requires us to take the derivative of the exponent. So that would be multiplied by negative k, since negative k is the derivative of that exponent. And then we would divide by the entire bottom function squared. Now, of course, 0 multiplied by all this will just be canceled out. We have a negative sign here and a negative sign there, so this will overall become positive. So we could write the final derivative as follows. Now that's the first derivative, so that would represent a function describing the rate of spread of the rumor, but we want to find when that function is at its greatest. And so in essence, we have to maximize this function right here. And in order to maximize this function or any other function, we have to find the derivative. So we're going to have to go through and calculate the derivative again, this time of this function right here. And so when we calculate the derivative of the p prime function, it will become p double prime. And so we'll go through one more time with the quotient rule. We'll have the bottom function times the derivative of the top function. That, again, is an exponential function, so we would just sort of recopy the exponential function and then multiply by the derivative of the exponent, which will be negative k. So we're going to end up multiplying by negative k. That will actually make this become k squared, and we can stick the negative sign out in the front of the expression. Then we have minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function. Now we have to be careful, that's going to require a chain rule. So we're going to have to take the exponent, we're going to have to move it down in front, we recopy the inside of the parentheses, we then subtract 1 from the exponent, so 2 minus 1 will just become 1, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is that ae to the negative kt times the derivative of the exponent, which is negative k. And so maybe we can place the negative k out in front here to make negative 2k. So this would be the derivative of the bottom, and we're going to insert that right beside this term here. And this then will be all over the bottom portion squared. So since we're going to end up squaring a square, we'll actually have it raised to the fourth. So we'll have 1 plus ae to the negative kt, all of which will be raised to the fourth power. Now, this can be cleaned up a little bit. You'll notice a common factor of 1 plus ae to the negative kt in, in this cluster of terms. We have that same factor in this cluster of terms, and then we have a factor of it in this bottom term. So we can actually cancel out one factor of it. So this will actually go away. This squared will become raised to the first power, and then this will become raised to the third power. 
Now, in order to continue finding the maximum value, we have to set the derivative equal to zero and solve. We could put that zero over one and then sort of cross multiply. And so zero times this term in the denominator will still be zero. So we can rewrite the equation as follows. Now, remember our objective is to solve for t here. And if we look at the first cluster of terms right here and the second cluster of terms right here, we do have a greatest common factor. Maybe we could circle it. We have a factor of ae to the negative kt here in that same factor right here. And then we also have a factor of k, it looks like. There's a k there, and then there's actually a k squared in here, so there's a second k. So we're going to actually be able to factor out a k ae to the negative t, and then we'll see what's left when we factor it out. So we would have this term right here. multiplied by actually just k since we're only factoring out one of the two k's here. And then we have our minus sign. And then we have this term right here. And then that would be multiplied by negative two. So that actually becomes positive two as follows. And this is still set equal to zero. We could then divide both sides of the equation by this factor right here so that it essentially is eliminated. And actually, if we look carefully, we can see that there's actually a factor of k still present in each term. Sort of missed that in the first round, but if we divide each term by k, that's going to eliminate it from those two terms. We could then distribute this minus sign into the parentheses. We then actually notice we have some like terms. This negative 1ae to the negative kt plus 2ae to the negative kt can be added together. We'll then add the 1 over to the other side. And then at this point, this becomes the same equation that we had solved for in part a. And so following that same procedure, we should see that the time turns out to be ln of a over k. So actually, the answers to parts a and b are the same. And so to make sure that this value of time actually does maximize the p prime function, we're supposed to do a derivative test. And so we take a value that's less than our critical value and also greater than our critical value and plug it into the derivative of our function. Now remember, the derivative of our function was actually the second derivative. So we'd have to plug into the second derivative in this case. And we should see that the second derivative is positive for a value immediately to the left of this critical value and then the second derivative is negative for a value immediately to the right. And so what that means is that the p prime function increases up to that value and then decreases beyond it, which indeed produces a maximum value. So that would confirm. If you have any questions about where those two values are coming from, please let me know in the comments. But that would be the technical work we would have to perform to show that this is the correct answer to part b. And also, by the way, we note that when the second derivative is positive, that actually means the original function is concave up. And when the second derivative is negative, the original function is concave down. And we're going to keep those two aspects in mind when we go to sketch the graph of this function. Now, when we sketch the graph, it might be helpful to plug a value of 0 in for time. If we plug 0 in for time, we would see that this entire term right here would, would just become a since e to the 0 is 1, and 1 times a is a. So we would be left with 1 over 1 plus a, which we know is some fractional value. It's some value that's going to end up being less than 1. So maybe if we plotted 1 on the y-axis, that means at time 0, we would have some initial starting point, maybe right here. It's not really clear where exactly, because we don't know the value of a. But it would be some value less than 1. And then hopefully we can also see that as time grows to infinity, this term right here is going to go to 0. And so we would be left with 1 over 1, which of course is 1. So as time marches on infinitely, we're going to end up approaching a value of 1. And so we essentially have a horizontal asymptote here. And then re remember from our number line analysis that at a value of time of ln of a over k, we have what's known as an inflection point because the concavity changed from being concave up to concave down. So perhaps somewhere right there, we could show a switch in concavity from concave up 
and then to concave down, and then approaching that horizontal asymptote. So this would roughly be the sketch of the graph. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can send your own question into this email address and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.